Hi, this is Bill Miller, and you're listening to Native Americana Audio Cafe. Hey, Bill, good to, good to see and hear you in this weird times, but it's, it's excellent to see you. Yeah, you too. I miss seeing you, brother. You look good. Yeah. How are you doing, and where are you at right now? I'm in Nashville. I'm in, uh, uh, and, um, and, and Nashville's just starting to open up today with restaurants uh, half full, and they, they aren't allowing any live performances or anything, but... Um, uh, I'm I'm doing good, Keith. Uh, my children are all saying, "Dad, don't go anywhere. You're gonna die. You're gonna die." But I'm fine. I'm not dead. Um, but I've been um, in the studio for weeks, uh, working on a new project with an incredible producer from Nashville, and uh, gonna release this thing <clears throat> pretty soon. Um, I'm doing a live stream Facebook show, um, not this weekend, but next weekend, um, Saturday night at 7 30 uh in La Crosse, wisconsin at a studio there but uh, i'm just working um on keeping my um my art my music alive keith it just um this gives me time i think it should give people time to collect uh their thoughts clean up their act or whatever the heck i i see a lot of people freaking out and um filled with fear and it, it is a it's a crazy time but I think any people have been through so many things very similar to this uh, in our lifetime, and especially you and I and o- older guys and us who have been through so many um, traumatic circumstances and still coming through it, is that I, I, I don't like what's going on, but I don't, it doesn't, it doesn't dare me, uh, doesn't deter me from keeping my spirit alive and, um, and thinking of other people. Uh, in fact, it's made a different type of compassion in me. I don't know how to describe it, but I'm, I shared the other day that uh, there were so many people um, uh, writing to me and stuff, and I said, you know, I'm I'm not afraid to tell somebody that I love them, and you're you're one of those, Keith. I've always loved you as a brother, and you know, I remember the first time we were together in uh, Upper Peninsula, Michigan. Remember that in that camp, and we were in the canoe with the loons out there, and I was playing my flute. <laughs> uh, I remember the story about cool. Mama. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. The time we were in Canada at uh where where the heck was it in it? and and uh things are breaking down there pretty weird we're at this festival together you and I but no I really love your music and your spirit Keith and uh, I'm glad you're on this show uh, I think people need to see us as Native American men as, as just the real side of us and and how you know they there's only five percent in the world uh, we're only point five is it point five or point yeah I think it's point five. Uh, percent indigenous people in the whole world including Australia and the indigenous people but I really think that little percentage makes a big um, root um, depth in in this earth I mean especially native people indigenous and um, they, they're they're missing the both the media very few people ever even mention us you know on this whole thing and they don't mention us in the elections they don't mention us at any time but um, uh, we're going to speak up, Keith. I'm not going to. I'm not going to stop singing until the day I die. I'm probably going to be in a freaking um, chair and fall over on the stage singing the last song of praises. But that's okay. Whoa! But uh, <laughs> I guess you know. Um, I've been wanting to ask you. You're kind of you're you're an ethnomusicologist and very knowledgeable about our field. But um, the term Native Americana, kind of, I'm I'm. We're creating a genre and letting the artist uh, weave the tapestry, you know, which each, each their own song and define it. But uh, what would that term define for you? How would you address that? Well, that's interesting you say that. It's, it's, uh, that's a great point because I've been asked in colleges with musicologists, what is native music and all this. And then I was asked when I was touring Tori Amos and Pearl Jam in the 90s, uh, it's not a lot of radio programs, and they said, what would you consider your music? Because I was with the alternative, you know, like opening up from when I said it's altered native, it's still native, it's just altered, you know. And uh, I don't know if anybody came up with that term, but I wish they would because we we are free in our own nation here to take on, as you have done, the blues or folk or putting um, uh, 49 songs into our own songs. Um, that's a beautiful freedom that we have. And I'm not saying that non-Indians can't do that. Either. They, they should. I, I love them to celebrate our music if, if they can do it, you know. Um, 
it, but it means a lot to me to be connected to native music. It doesn't mean I'm going to do all powwow songs because I'm not, I'm not in a drum group. I'm not going to, I, I play a lot of different styles of music, but I've never been able to separate myself from my past, or the, not even the past, it's not, I, don't, I hate to say that word, my present tense is still deeply in love with my heritage. It really is. And, and I've never, although there's alcoholism, they, they can, there's a list a mile long about the negative. You guys got diabetes, you have fetal alcohol syndrome, your unemployment rate is incredibly high, your suicide rate, is, all this stuff like that. If I looked at that crap, I, I think I'd give up and try to be another race. But it, it, it isn't that way with me. You and I have our sense of humor, which I think has carried our people through. Um, we have our sense of um, the way we observe things is quite a bit different, I'm noticing, than a lot of other people do. Now, I, I notice other people can have that observation skill if they if they can look at uh, nature and, and nature uh, the nature of man, too. If they can start looking at things differently, we'll start to see things and start to break through these um, – these barriers that society and pop culture has put up for us. But I, I, I'm, I'm not saying we're perfect, but I can say that I'm, I'm in, I'm in perfect pitch with what I feel, what, what my creator made me uh, as, as a, as a native kid on that reservation in Wisconsin. Um, I don't, I don't live there anymore. I live in Nashville. I live in a, in a world of um, country music and they love me here. And uh, someday before I die, I think I'll try to do a country record. Not, not, not to make it just for the heck of it because i love old time country i don't like the new stuff but um no my my spirit's very much alive keith um very positive about things and uh yeah i hit walls like everybody i mean that's the thing people think that i don't get any walls especially during this time there have been a couple of very depressing times i've been divorced for 10 years and um i i i lost my son <clears throat> four years ago my oldest son died and that that hurt me more than anything. I think even worse than my divorce. And and then I I flatlined April 11th that, that same year after he died. And um and I'm coming back from heart failure. So uh, I think that you and I have been given so many extra chances at life. And I I, I that's just the way Indians Indians live. I guess it's it's okay. You know um, I just keep moving forward. I'm not going to be looking back anymore. I used to look back, uh, but hell man i'm not looking back anymore well i think your definition um defines it and and we are what we the i, I like this saying it says bill thus the gods extract for the price of a song for us to become what we're singing and um you are native americana i mean you are alternative you are all these things and Maybe since you got a guitar in your hand, could you give us the other half of that definition? <laughs> yeah, this is a song I wrote about a year after my son died. I think a lot of people that aren't in our world don't understand Indian time. Well, Indian time is is the only definition I can give to non-Indians. Is, it's, it's when we get there. We get, I'll get there when I get there. <laughs> Maybe an hour later. Maybe in another time zone. It might be next month, but I'll get there. And uh, I was on Indian time with healing with my son. My, my son and I loved each other, man. He was six foot four and a, an incredible musician. So this song attracted a producer. I sang it at Johnny Cash's son's uh, house one night. John Carter Cash is a good friend of mine. He, he's co-producing this project. And um, I sang it to his, his baby, his good child, called Matosan. Now, Matosan is in my language, but he did stone tree and that's my family's real name so i wrote this song and i thought of you I, i'm glad you're on because i did think of you because you, you do these 49 songs these melodies that people don't understand so i took this um chant and i made it into a song called my stone tree strong warriors for my children so i'm gonna do it for you it's on my newest record it'll be out
so cool bill i had to put on my sunglasses that's my uh that's my reader if i know if the song is really good it, it makes me put on my sunglasses but um those are heavy heavy lines they will show they will show mercy they will show grace those are some deep yeah. lyrics bill well you know our people have that even without the church is telling us that or people tell them we have a deep spiritual background and there's no reason we have artistic values. You know, I remember my counselor telling me in high school, Mr. Miller, I think, I, what are you, what are you planning on doing? And I said, I wanted to be a visual artist and go to art school. Oh, you can't do that. You you just do crafts. You people do beadwork. work. You don't do art. I want to be a musician. You can't do that. Your dad's a drunk. You're going to be, well, the fact is we have everything that everybody on this earth has, if not even more raw materials of, and one of the things I saw in my son and I see in our people, we've, we've even, History and Hollywood always paints us as a victim. The fact is, um, our people have so much strength, and we got to get back to that warrior culture. And we have mercy and grace as much as any. I, I've seen it from so many Native people in my lifetime, showing me mercy and grace and feeding me and holding me and loving me. There's no comparison to a, a beautiful Native family. There just isn't. <laughs> I'm sorry. Well, I love the um, the network uh, that it's hard to describe, I guess, in the description of the genre Native Americana. It's kind of off the grid. We're going places where um, most Americans have never been able to go to. And, and it's I think it's um, it's it's encouraging to see that finally the culture is such a rich part of America that we're just starting to discover Americans are just discovering this beautiful off the grid, but what you described as a native family being such a gem and a jewel and such being the integral in the heart of native culture, that, uh, that's, that puts it at, at a place. And um, you've seen things that I've seen. You've seen more things than I've seen. And uh, it's great to have you here sharing some of these stories and things. Any, any more insights, Bill? Well, I, I, I want us to um, I encourage our Native people um, to um, not lose your, your balance. There's a, a Hopi word that I remember. There was a movie out called Kleana Skatsi, which means in their language, I guess, hopefully I'm right, but I'm pretty sure it means world out of balance. That's where we're at right now. And I, I, I urge them not to lose their identity in the crisis of the trauma. We've been through too many of these things. And don't lose it in fear. And there are people out there that are, um, um, they're, they're unstable, uh, not native people, but I mean, and, and their, their, their ability to stabilize is, is getting worse because they're, they have fear and doubt about their unstableness. So they have fear within a fear within a fear. You know what I mean? But this is the way I look at it. I got a, a song, I'm not going to do it this time. We don't have enough time, but 
next time, but it's called The Storm. When I was in the hospital, I was dying. They said I had six days left to live. I wanted to join my son, you know, and he died just a few months before me. And uh, this friend of mine, he's six degree black belt, he came in the hospital. He said, Bill, you know who you are, Bill? Can you tell me who you are? I said, yeah, I'm Bill Miller. Uh, no, uh, who are you? I said, I'm a musician. No, man, who are you? I said, I, I don't know what you're talking about, man. I'm a, I'm a Native American man from Wisconsin. He goes, no. He said, let me tell you who you are. I said, okay. I had tubes up my nose and everything. He goes, you're a storm. You're a storm within a storm. And he that made the storm is within you. And he walked away. And I never forgot that. And I want to tell Native people that we are a storm. We are still a storm, a beautiful storm. A hardcore storm, but we're within a storm right now. But he, the creator who made this storm, is within us. We got to see past this and, and before us and behind us. We got to real. We got to balance the past with our, with with who we are now in the future. Don't go too far into either on one of them. I'm telling people to stay in the present tense. What if eagles lived in the past? They'd probably they'd probably be dead. Eagles don't live when they see something, you know, uh, so many miles away and they dive, they start diving, a golden eagle's been clocked at 200 miles an hour going after a freaking rabbit. What if they didn't live, what if they said, well, what am I going to do tomorrow? What if I don't get a rabbit for my babies? What if, what if you know, <laughs> what's bull crap? Our creatures that our creator made are in the present tense, in the moment, and in strong, really strong strength in the present tense. Those are the warriors, those are the ways that, that, I remember being as a kid on the boxing team, being taught that way to live in this realm. Don't be thinking it's over yet. It ain't over yet, but don't don't get ahead of yourself. Be now and be 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 strong in the moment. And I I'm just urging my friends and family out there to be strong. And you and I, we beat the odds uh, uh, in a lot of ways. We've we've been around. We've toured forever, and we're still. I, I love you so much because you're still the same guy I met thirty some years ago or more. You know. You're the same dude. You look great. Bill, I, I want, since I have you here, we hear a lot about these three barrios of music around contact of America. And one of the barrios is called the Caribbean Barrio, Caribbean Barrio, which we know a lot about. And then the other one is the Celtic Barrio that was came through the St. Lawrence and, and, and through North America that way, but the other barrio that was in existence was a Native American barrio of music. And um, you know about this barrio. I call it the lost barrio of music. And that's what we're kind yeah, of well, doing. It is like the lost tribe. The people aren't, they're, they're coming in and out of it, Keith, and they don't even know it. I've had to tell musicians that. They go, man, what are you doing, man? And um, and I, I think it's natural. You and I have stayed within that, that barrio that, that, pentatonic scale, I guess they try to say it's, it's, it's so many notes, but, you know, I look at it this way. There's a Radiohead song. I forgot what it is, but they say something that I've had this philosophy since I've been a kid. My dad told me to keep it. But in Indian, in, in our family, two and two make five, and they always had, because that's all we freaking had was two plus two, but we made five out of four. You understand what I'm saying? And, and, uh, and, that's what, and in fact, sometimes two and two means six because I have to make even more because I had kids or it means seven sometimes. But that two and two to the world will always make four. That's their freaking problem. The same with us. You give me four notes or five notes or six notes and I'll take you to the higher up. I'll take you into the deep, uh, deep crying on the deep. I'll take you into the waters. I'll take you into the spirit world. I'll bring the supernatural element out in that sense. And that's the only place you're going to find it. You're not going to find the supernatural in the freaking pop world where they try to line the beats uh, and, and the calories or, or, or your outfit or the rising stage or a dance move. Um, we are in all of that. Our dance moves on fancy dance, grass dance, uh, women's dancing. We got the dance down. Our voices singing high above a uh, drum or playing flutes. We've got it all in us. So when I apply that, when you apply it to the modern contemporary stuff that we're doing, we got to be brave and re re remain that. Uh, we're in a competitive field to stay alive, and it is rough right now. I, I have no sh shows at all. Uh, I, had, uh, uh, I had a couple months worth of shows that were worth a lot of money, probably more money I made in, in years, and it's all gone now, but I didn't sit there and cry and, and get pissed off and blame the white man for it. It's like it, it was nobody's fault. It, we are not in control, but I am in control of my spirit. My spirit realigned like a compass. And those six holes on that flute and those six notes that I know 
for the rest of my life are going to come into play. In fact, my, a lot of my songs, I even tune my guitar a little differently, but I, I have a way now that I'm finding going back to those simplistic, powerful modes. And that's what it's about. That's what our, that's what our type of music is. It's, it's powerful and simplistic. It isn't political. It isn't long-winded speeches. It isn't overdone uh, choruses and let's raise, let's change the key right now to freak people out. It's none of that. It's 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 power from from um, authenticity. It's also very beautifully transparent as the smoke that comes from sweet grass, sage and cedar. You can see through it when you put a match to it or a light. You can see it's it's got a translucent, beautiful colors to it. Those are the same colors they've used in the Middle East, uh, and they still do. And 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 over the, you know the Christ child or anything in churches that use these incense things, frankincense and myrrh, those are our frankincense and myrrh are sage, cedar, and sweetgrass. And we need to know that our spirits are still transparent and still rising and still quite beautiful, even though it's broken. Um, it, it's okay. We still shine through those cracks. Well, people love you, Bill. The strong words you're saying in the uh, rapid transition is like a Woody Guthrie, Bob Dylan thing. And uh, we, we love hearing them, and, and so we're so happy that uh, you've gone through these trials and tribulations and yet remain true to your spirit. I was um, talking to, uh, as an example of the people, how they respect you, and the songwriter from Nashville, Steve Earle, speaks so highly of you. And people in circles like that, that you come in circles like that, it's great to that you're out there and making a difference in the Nashville scene, um, confronting a stereotype just by being who you are. We appreciate that. <laughs> Thanks, Keith. You know, there's always a, there, there seems to be a, uh, a pill for everything nowadays. <laughs> and I remember growing up uh, on the res, I remember I got sick once. Um, I was teaching in a school, a music and art uh, in Milwaukee public schools back when I, uh, uh, then Wisconsin Education for Indians, I was a part of that. And um, I got sick and one of the elder native women, Ojibwe women, she said, um, let me make you some tea. And she found some mint uh, that, that she had grown and she crushed it up and had it dried that week. And then she made me this mint tea with uh, local honey. And that was all she had. And she said, you need to drink this every day. And within three days, I had that ugly cold gone. But I always now go back to mint tea because of that woman, um, people can make an impression on you. And when they do it out of love and care, plus our medicines are still being used by pharmaceuticals. They, they have, they've blasted away them, made billions of dollars. In, but uh, we were the original people to have these healing roots, these healing methods of healing each other and taking care of our children and our elders. And um, we've got to keep that going there. My, my pill, um, my main pill that I have, that I keep going on a daily basis is my music and my art. And I'm so thankful to see you and to be connected with Native people. I'm so isolated right now, not just because of coronavirus. I've been isolated before. Just saying, I live in a basement of a friend's house in Nashville. Everybody thinks I, I have an arrowhead pool and I drive a Mercedes. I had a beat up Nissan Pathfinder, 400,000 miles on it. I just put new time last year. I, I, don't have, I don't have a refrigerator. I don't have a stove. I, I, I've lived that way for a while. I live out of a box because the things that just went wrong for a while, but I'm going to get it back, you know? And, um, but I, my spirit is, is, is really touched by you, Keith, and by this radio program because I, I miss being with Indian people. I miss seeing you and I appreciate you putting me on. Man. All right. Well, thanks to George and K, KBFT up there. They loved you and your performance and thank you. Miigwech. Hi, this is Bill Miller, and you're listening to Native Americana Music Cafe, one of the best Native programs out there. You need to support it with all your big bucks and your beadwork, your wampum. You need to get tires and uh, freaking hubcaps. Send them in. Then make sure they tell people I'm going to be playing Saturday night next week on Facebook Live. And, so uh, maybe we